doing? Okay, we're going to measure a, 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 a mini circuit 70 megahertz low pass filter. See? Cool. Um, and I've set this up for an insertable device, male to female. And since I don't have a complete cal kit, matter of fact, I don't even have any cal kit, I have this cobbled cal kit. Um, we're going to assume this is zero length. At 70 megahertz, it is. So, from the preset, you set the displays up for what you want to measure. So, we say start, and just because we kind of know what we're doing, we'll start at 10 megahertz. And we'll say stop, and this goes, this instrument goes to 3 gigahertz, but we'll stop at, oh, well, 500 megahertz. That's probably a good spot for that filter. And then we'll just look at the filter right quick and make sure it's more or less what we want to see, and we haven't done anything stupid. And you can see down at, down at the pass band, uh, S11, the the... The port one match is pretty good. It's 10 dB per division. So we'll move scale reference. We'll move the scale to the top. Um, reference position 10. And then we'll change the, um, the, the, uh, the scale per division to 5. And whoops. Ah, 1, 0. Times 1. And then we'll change the scale to 5 dB per division. There. So that's what low pass filters look like for reflection. And here's what they look like for transmission, and we'll do the same thing. Uh, reference position 10. Since, it, since it's a passive device, everything is going to be down. So nothing will be above the reference line. So at least this makes the displays pretty. So if we land a marker in here, we can see that the um, marker 1, put it up here where it's down about 3 dB, is about 67 megahertz, which is a 70. So mini circuits, as a rule, doesn't screw up. So if we cal this thing, then we can make absolute phase, we can make absolute level and phase measurements. So from the from not cal, you can uh, just grossly prove that the device is what you think it is, and set the displays up. Uh, our test test signals are zero dBm, which is default. You can change the test signal levels to anything you want. So if we go cal, we're going to lie to it until it's a seven millimeter kit, which it is not, since I don't have the extra five thousand dollars laying around. Uh, calibrate menu, we're going to do a full two port, we're going to do reflections first, we're going to show port one and open, and I'm going to cheat and use a, 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 a barrel connector. My, my hatchet job open is carefully matched to my hatchet job short, and what I did is Let's observed... Hold still, we'll zoom up on that. Yeah, what we'll... I did is I carefully observed the short with a better vector network analyzer than this one and filed on the open to match the to, to make them 180 degrees apart. Cool. So they're they're legitimately the same cal plane, but that's a long way from saying that they're really saying that they're really uh, um, cal standards. However, let's see, we're gonna do open first. So we show it an open and if I was really a civilized human being I'd have a torque wrench. But this is a hack job. So open and it beeps to tell you that it looked at it. Short. Come on. Buttons are sticky. Oh. Uh, so now know. it knows that it, what it's learning is the outsides of the Smith chart and where the center of the chart is. And then here's a reasonably accurate 50 ohm load. So now I've told it, trust me, this is 50 ohms. Anything that looks different than this is not 50 ohms. So whether this is 50 ohms or not, the instrument thinks it is. And what is the instrument? It's an 8753D with an external test set. They make another version of this with an internal test set, right. but then you can't get at all the test signals. There's occasionally reasons to want to get at the stimulus signal and the reference signal in the A and the B channel. So all the switches are in an external box. Um, so then we'll do the other other port here. So we'll show the uh, port two, uh, the open first. Anyway, it builds this whole, fan, you know, fancy twelve port or twelve uh, twelve term model with uh, amplitude and phase at the two hundred and one frequencies that it's observing. So, and since I'm trying to go as quickly as possible here, we've limited it to two hundred and one points. The instrument has enough memory to do sixteen hundred and one points maximum. Great. Come on. 
the buttons are getting sticky. But it's a 40-year-old instrument. Too. Well, not that much. It's oh, it's it's not. 30. 30? Yeah. This instrument came out in the uh, uh, well, mid to early 80s. Formerly Hewlett Packard, now Agilent. Yes. So the new version of the software has a button that says do all, so you don't have to manually push all these buttons. Okay, so now it knows the reflection standard for both ports, it knows the through calibration for both ports, and since we're not going to do a really high performance isolation measurement, we're going to tell it to omit the isolation terms and assume the instrument's perfect. This would only bother, if we were doing like a duplexer, where we wanted to see down to minus 100, we, we could take out the leakage terms of the instrument. Right. Which could be useful, but... Done. Come on. Entry off. Okay, so, let's see if it thinks it's a filter and what it looks like. Okay, let's see that flash up there. So now it's Cal. It's just, these are, well, they're made by two different companies. This cable's made by Rosenberger, and this cable's made by um, somebody else. Whoever makes semi-flex cables. We, uh, um, they sent it to me as a sample, and... Uh, we're buying them now, but this one was a funny length, so it doesn't, didn't do us any good. Now you'll observe that it, it goes clear up to the reference line now. Let's it didn't before, because it didn't know what these cable lengths were. So that's the, trans, the transmission characteristic. Now we could measure either way. So right now we're measuring S21, which is the signal going from port 1 to port 2. It's so the through signal. We could change it to S... 1, 2, which is a signal going the other way. So if it were an amplifier and we wanted to measure reverse isolation, the instrument knows how to do that. Um, if we go to channel 1 here, we can measure reflection. And you can see down here at, in the pass band, the reflection, the return loss is pretty good. So minus 5, minus 10, minus 15. And if I stick the marker on it, you'll see even at this nasty spot, it's uh, oh, minus 16 or so. Can you expand that a little bit? Well, here I can make it display differently, though. Dual channel on. Come on, on. And then I can change channel one format to um, Smith chart. There, how's that? I like So that. now the top display is telling you the absolute, the absolute reflection coefficient and phase angle of the port one, of port one of this filter. So this port starts out, starts down here in the middle of the chart at 50 ohms, and then you, you can you can resolve out ampl or you can resolve out reflection and phase, and you have your choice right now. So it, yeah. Let's see, where's the marker? For, uh, marker frequency is so at 28 megahertz or 29 megahertz. Uh, it's 48.55 ohms minus J 1.1, which you know is 1.02 to 1 SWR. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's that's fine. But when you move out here to the the knee, when you move out here to the knee of the filter where it's down 3 dB or so, at 70 megahertz. And see, now it looks like a short. It's down to 5 ohms plus J15. So it looks like an inductor to ground. Don't want that. No. Well, no, you do. It's, lo it's a low-pass filter. This thing's behaving... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. This, this thing's behaving let's exactly... Let's talk about a, this filter again. Yeah, this is behaving exactly as Harvey says can it'll you, behave. Can you describe this filter a little better? It's, it's a 70 megahertz low-pass filter sold by mini circuits. Hold it still there. Yeah. See? An SLP70 means it's got, S, it's got uh, SMA connectors on it, and it cuts off at 70 megahertz. And what's the slope rate and all that? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head. Go to minicircuits.com and, okay. and look up that part number. But, but Harvey Kiley is very proud of these. Oh, cool. Anyway, um, that's what network analyzers do. And this one works to 3 gigahertz. If I had better standards, uh, we can do this trick to 3 gigahertz. The, the Cal standards are good to... Well, we'll do that on our next episode. Thank you very much. Yeah, you bet.